Welcome to my corner of the internet. I'm the house hacker. Today I want to talk to you about saving and why it's important. It's not really about how much you make, it's about how much you save. And you might be thinking, well, what if I make a million dollars a year? There are plenty of highly successful and wealthy individuals who are living paycheck to paycheck. It's not unheard of to find doctors in this situation who are making three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars a year and still somehow living paycheck to paycheck. But this isn't about being miserable. You can still enjoy life and approach it from a perspective of smart spending to reduce your risk. So to start off, we're going to talk about why this topic is important for everybody to implement in their lives. Then I want to talk about an example that you could use to improve the way that you spend your money and maximize your savings. And finally, I want to talk about cost of living and how that's going to affect your lifestyle. So let's dive right into this. If you got onto the Dave Ramsey channel, you could find a slew of examples of doctors who are living paycheck to paycheck, who are drowning in debt. And of all of those examples, I want to kind of focus in on one of them. There was an orthodontist who had $1 million of student loan debt. And if you're anything like me, that number just knocked the air out of your chest. Just hearing it. That is insane to have so much debt. And let's put this in perspective. He had a million dollars worth of debt with an average interest rate of 7%. Now, he said that he planned to pay $10,000 a month until he paid this off. That's gonna take 12 years and seven months. And when he is done paying it off, he'll have paid a million dollars in principal and half a million dollars in interest. Unlike Dave Ramsey, I don't think there's a problem with going in debt when it comes to investing in your education. So long as you do it in a calculated and well-balanced way. If we look at you know, med school, about 40% of pre-med individuals who have received their undergraduate degree trying to go into a graduate medical program only 40% of them actually make it into med school. And of that 40%, 5% fail. When you look at all of this risk, your goal is to look at how do you mitigate it? And you mitigate it by reducing your educational cost. There's plenty of doctors who've gotten their education for a couple hundred thousand dollars. It's, it's still an expensive price tag, but it's not a million dollars. And that guy, clearly made a series of very bad decisions that led to where he was at on that. And if you were to ask me, I would say that what he did for that $1 million price tag, it was not worth it. So let's move on to the next topic where I'm going to give you guys an example. Going to Starbucks is extremely important for a lot of people. It's part of a routine for a lot of people. The average amount someone spends at Starbucks per visit is $6. If you were to visit Starbucks, let's say five times a week, and you were to do that every week of the year, that would come out to $1,560. But instead, let's look at an alternate scenario. Let's say it's 1990. You're at the beginning of your career and you've got 30 years ahead of you. You decide that you, instead of going to Starbucks, you are going to make coffee at home or in the office. So you decide you're going to take that extra money that you're saving from not going to Starbucks, that's $6 per visit, and you're going to, you're going to invest that total per month cost of $130 every month in the S&P 500. Now, since 1990, the S&P 500 has grown at an average of 8.48% annually. That means today, that money would be worth $200,000, just over $200,000. Now, you need to ask yourself, is the Starbucks worth $200,000? I mean, sure, it's something you get to do every single day. It's value added every single day because there is a value added there 
but is that value added over the course of 30 years, $200,000? I personally don't think so. But when it comes to being smart in how you spend your money, that choice really needs to come down to you and what your priorities in life are. Every little bit of how you make a decision on where you're gonna save, what you're gonna save on, all of that comes down to the end result of where you're gonna be. Remember, lifestyle creep is a real threat. It's gonna be something that you need to keep your eyes on to make sure that your constant spending in life does not continue to grow and balloon with your increased income over time. Otherwise, you're never gonna become more wealthy just because you made more money. So let's move on to the final topic, the cost of living chart from Visual Capitalist. And instead of looking at this from just a cost of living analysis, let's instead look at it from individuals who spend different amounts of money due to different lifestyle choices. You can see that the discrepancy between these different choices is so catastrophically different. I mean, on one side, you are looking at a million dollars lasting you 35 years. And on the other side, you're, it's not going to even make 10 years. That difference is so huge. And it comes down to different lifestyle choices. You need to ask yourself what is important to you and what matters to you. And that discrepancy right there, I mean, I just wanted to show you guys that chart so that you really got it in your mind that it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you save. That's what makes all of the difference. Leave a comment down below and let me know what is the worst thing that you spend money on that you regret, that you're either doing occasionally and perpetually. And do you plan on stopping or do you continue planning to spend on it? Uh, I mean, Starbucks and avocado toast, that's the low hanging fruit, but what, what do you guys spend it on? Like and comment below. Subscribe if you like the video, share it, and uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys on the next one.